Good morning, Hope College. I said, good morning, Hope College. Thank you. I hope everyone had a great, wonderful Christmas break and ready to start this spring semester. It's a blessing for me to be here at Hope College. And I stand here before you today, truly honored to be here and be a part of this college. Uh, Let me start by talking about Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. The scripture tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. My message to you today is this, trusting in the path God has planned for you. Now, my life story, I can truly tell you, it's a, it's a testimony of how God has led the path for me to follow, even when I was unsure of what he had in store for me. So let me just start out by telling you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, had a wonderful mother and father, youngest of three, my brother and sister always supported me, loved me, cared for me. But it was in high school that I figured out what I was gonna do with my life. I was in ROTC program, and I realized that I came to love what the military had to offer, education, travel, training, a chance to serve in the military. I was very excited about it. I was strong and I was in good health. You know, when I was young, back in my days, you know, dunking the ball, ask the people at noontime basketball, they'll tell you now, (laughs) trust me. Now I talked to my parents about attending a military college, which would allow me to become an officer in the army after two years. So I applied to to a small college called Georgia Military College. And in my first year there, It was very challenging, but I knew that being an officer in the Army was my dream. That's what I wanted to do. I had been thinking about it for about four years, and I was very excited. So at the end of my freshman year at the military college, I went home, back to Atlanta, spending my time thinking about the next year in college, working, hanging out with friends. And one day, I was riding in a car with my brother Joe, and his best friend, John. And we were just driving along, and we went underneath the highway overpass. And lo and behold, I looked to the left. And what do I see? I see an 18-wheeler semi-truck coming down the off-ramp, heading straight to my car. I didn't think we were going to make it. Speak on, Brother Mike. That's my biggest supporter and Heckler, my wife. As the truck started to hit us, it it was like my life just flashed right before my eyes, and I couldn't believe it. And I was thinking, this is it. This is the end. That truck hit us and drove right over top of us, all 18 wheels, and smashed the hood of the car, smashed the roof of the car, right down on top of us. I passed out, and when I woke up, all I could hear were paramedics screaming, can you hear me? Can you hear me? It took me a minute or two to respond. I said, I hear you. And then I immediately looked to my brother, and he was alive. And then I looked to his friend, and he was alive. And I thank the Lord for what he had done for us. Amen. Now, it was during my time in the hospital that I realized. The second day, the doctor came in and he told me, he said, Michael, I'm afraid to tell you, you have extensive injuries, bulging disc in your back. And your neck, shoulder injuries, leg injuries. He said, I don't know how long it will take for you to recover or if you might ever recover. I called the military school, let them know what had happened, and I had to withdraw from the military school. So there goes my dreams of being an officer in the military. Went home a few weeks later, And I was sitting at my house and I was depressed. 
I didn't know what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And then a good friend of mine came and visited me. And he reminded me, he said, God would not allow this to happen if he didn't have a plan for you. I'm so thankful for him. With God's faithfulness, one year later, I was back in school at a, at a small liberal arts college called Georgia College, where I worked hard to finish my degree, and I was able to do that. And while finishing my college, I figured out what I wanted to do with my life because I had to change it. I know I had everything planned out going in the military, but now I had to change my path. So I relied on God to help me to figure it out, and he did. He told me through, through lots of prayer that, you know, my calling was to help people in need. So that is what I concentrated on. And then it was after college when I finished that I visited a good friend of mine in Tampa, Florida. And while visiting him, it allowed me to meet the most beautiful woman, most amazing woman I've ever known, my wife, Sonia. What you may know as Professor Trent Brown in the psychology department. <laughs> You might know about that name, but I know about Sonia, and she's just amazing. Again, I was visiting a friend, ran into my wife. There was nothing but the grace of God that led me there. God knew where I needed to be and who I needed to meet, and I'm eternally grateful. So I was soon, in, I, was, I moved to Florida, started looking for work, and there I was. Uh, applying for a job as a manager at a, at, a, at a community health center. And the Lord knew where he wanted me to be. So I became a manager there and also the social worker, working with people in need, helping them to get what they needed to get. You know, and while I was there during my time, I was able to open a prenatal unit in the health center, started a dental unit in the health center, uh, provided a mobile medical unit to go out and see the homeless for free, open a clinic above the Salvation Army. I mean, I was on a roll and I just knew this is what God wanted me to do. This is where he wanted me to be. But no. <laughs> God's a funny man sometimes. <laughs> he said, yeah, Michael, you've done my calling here, but it's time to move on. So here's the story. So my wife comes home one day and she says to me, you know, I got a position. I've been offered a position over at Hope College. I'm going to go and interview for it. And I said, Hope College? Is that really a name for a college? I was quite surprised. And then I said, okay. So where is Hope College? She said, in Holland, Michigan. So I paused. And of course, you know, I was shaking my head. This can't be right. I said, so this is what you want me to do. You want me to leave sunny Tampa, Florida, where it's 75, 80 degrees during Christmas, where we can be on the beach having a good time, and you want me to go to Holland, Michigan and shovel my driveway? Are you serious? She, smi she just smiled, and if you know anything about my wife, her smile is just, it's just infectious. She just smiled, she said, I might not be offered the position, but I knew better. <laughs> Anybody who knows my wife knows when she applied for that job, she was going to get it. And I knew it. So here I am preparing myself to come to Holland, Michigan, and I'm shaking my head thinking, Lord, what have you done to me? But he knew what he was doing. He had a plan, and I'm so thankful for it. So we moved to Holland, Michigan, and she's teaching in the psychology department. And... Uh, we had our first son, Michael Jr. Best thing ever happened to my life. So happy for him. Uh, so I was staying home and I was keeping him for a little bit and then I decided to start back working and a friend of mine recommended me to go to Community Action House and I don't know if you know about Community Action House. They're here in Holland, Michigan and they're a nonprofit and they provide for the homeless and people in need. So I started working there and I was just think I was having a great time doing social work, running their education program, and I just thought to myself, here we go again. God has placed me here. This is where he wants me to be. I'm very happy. God's a funny man. But 
after staying a few years at Community Action House, God said, no, it's time for you to move on yet again. So I shook my head and I said, okay, what is it that you want me to do? And then, lo and behold, a job at Hope College comes available. And a few people from Hope called me and they said, Michael, you should apply for this job. And I really didn't want to at first. I was thinking, no, I'm truly happy where I'm at. And then some more people called me and said, Michael, you should, you should try for this job. And I said, oh, okay, I think I'll try. So I applied for it. And I talked to my wife about it and I prayed on it. And half of me wanted to come to Hope. And half of me wanted to stay at Community Action House. So uh, I applied and by the grace of God again, he gave me this job working at Hope College. And I tell you, it has been just the most amazing ride working with you students future leaders of America, you make me so proud. You know, it's truly my, my blessing to be here, to be able to work with you. So as I, as I continue on my journey towards the future, for you, I just want you to remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. and he shall direct your path. I leave you with this message today. Trust and have faith in God and know that he will lead your life.